Good afternoon. <coughs> Welcome to Emitting Futures by Cell. Now the purpose of this video is totally 100% about investment, wealth management, uh, how you can use a software to boost and build your wealth, whether you have a 401k account, IRA, Roth IRA, TFSA in Canada, tax-free savings account, or the regular RRSP, Registered Retirement Savings Plan, or even an RESP for your child. Now, we're going to touch upon some thought-provoking thought ideas in this uh, discussion. Now, the basic premise of this investment thesis of philosophy that I'm going to discuss in this video is that A, I'm going to show you or share with you what is flawed in financial planning and, and wealth management in the current broken model followed in Wall Street in the United States and Bay Street in Canada. And then I'm going to suggest or an offer a better alternative using our software. So before we go into our software, let's examine the question, what is broken in the existing model? Let's take a, a good example of crude oil. Crude oil has been falling for a long time, way back from June 2014. As a matter of fact, when oil was at $106, all the way down. And now we are looking at $45. In this, and you know, this fall in oil did not happen overnight or in one week or five days or 10 days. It's been systematically falling. Yet, the only ideas you hear on the radio or television how to profit from that fall in oil, some people say go to the gas station and fill up the gas. So jokes apart, let's be serious. Have you ever wondered or have you ever asked your investment advisor and financial planner, how come when oil came down all this while, they did not suggest any idea how to benefit from this fall in crude oil price. The, did you know there is actually an ETF called SZO? So if you want to benefit from the fall in crude oil, way back in June, July 2014, anytime in this area, you had to go along on this ETF. No options, no, no fancy uh, investment ideas, very simple. This is an exchange traded fund, very low MER. You go long on SZO and then you would have bought it around $35, $40 and you would have had 100% doubling in less than one year. The question to ask is how come the financial planner, the investment advisor, the Edward Jones in the world, the JP Morgan, the Goldman Sachs, of the Royal Bank of Canada, the TD Wealth Asset Management. None of those financial planners or investment advisor did they ever tell you to buy this ETF. And they don't have to be perfect market timers. They could have asked you to go along here, if not in July, in August, September, October, at any point, and you would have made a whopping return on your portfolio. How come they did not do that? Question to ask. Second example, let's look at TLT. TLT is long-term government of United, United States treasury paper. And, and the TLT went up, okay? Let me show you a weekly chart. All the way from a value of 105, it went up to 140 in 2014, beginning of 2014, all the way till now. And of course, now there is a pullback. Massive increase in the value of U.S. government paper. You could have made more money with TLT than investing in stocks or stock market. How come? Why is it? Why is it that your financial planner your investment advisor, all the experts who come on television, all the experts who come on print media, all the experts who come on radio, never talk about TLT. And this is 100% safe. This is US government paper. 
you're not risking any, it's not like investing in Blackberry or Apple or Alibaba or Facebook, right? A lot of people jumped on Alibaba and got smoked out, right? So why, why invest in these disco stocks? You know, Alibaba, Facebook, Twitter, they're disco stocks, GoPro, Tesla. Why waste your money on disco stocks, right? You could have invested in TLT, Federal Government of United States paper, and you could have made a massive return in your portfolio and you would have built your wealth. Did any of them tell you the secret? Obviously, they did not. So there has to be a reason why these facts are being hidden from you, why these are not being disclosed. A question to ask. The, and now this will, and I can give you more examples, okay? The fundamental question, you know, issue is, I'm not saying, okay, that the financial planners, the investment advisors, who are working for the banks or other institutions are not honest or dedicated. In fact, I have many friends who are highly educated, highly intelligent, holding CFA degrees and who are financial planners or investment advisors. By and large, most of them are very intelligent, very smart, very hardworking and very knowledgeable, very dedicated. It, and this is not just in the United States, in Canada and Europe. There's no denying that fact. But in spite of that, they are not performing. Now you may say, huh, don't make a sweeping statement, they are not performing. That's ridiculous. How do you prove they are not performing? Do you have any facts to prove that? So let's address that question. In Canada, the government of Canada and many other private television channels keep on saying, you know, we have two main investment vehicles. One is the RRSP, Registered Retirement Savings Plan, and another one is TFSA, Tax-Free Savings Account. According to Government of Canada's own statistics, and also private banks like Royal Bank, TD Bank, they all say that 80 to 90 percent of Canadians are not able to make use of the RRSP or TFSA limits that the Government of Canada, the tax department provides them. So let me give an example. Let's just throw some number for discussion purposes. Like every year, the Revenue Canada or the tax authorities allow a Canadian to invest up to say 18,000. I'm just simplifying some numbers without going into technicalities. Let's say they allow you to invest up to $18,000 in your RRSP account to maximize your tax savings. It has been found that very high percentage of Canadians, 70-80% of the Canadians have no money to max out their RRSP. The same thing is happening with TFSA or tax-free savings account. What they are saying is only the rich and the very rich are making use of these tax benefits. The lower middle class and the middle class don't have any money to make use of it. Why? And the same issue is happening in the United States, okay, except that it is Roth IRA, IRA, 401k, you know, the terminologies are different. If the, this proves the fact that the financial planners and the investment advisors are not delivering the goods, even though they are knowledgeable, they are educated, they are sincere and dedicated. So something they are doing wrong because of which the majority of Canadians, the middle class, and the majority of Americans in the middle class are not able to build their wealth. A lot of people lost money in US and Canada when the stock market crashed in 2008 and 2009. That's a well-known fact. I don't have to make up this uh, number or fact. Even the fact that majority of the Canadians don't have money to invest in RRSP TFSA, it's a cold fact available for you to verify on the internet or television or you can call Government of Canada. They'll tell you. So if this is happening, that means all the army of financial planners. Every year, the Financial Planning Institute in Canada is churning out hundreds and thousands of financial planners. Same in the United States. With this massive army of accountants and financial planners in the country, in the continent, yet most Canadians and most Americans are so poor that they cannot 
max out the entitlement in RSP, TFSA, 401k and all that. What does that tell you? That they are not able to make the average Canadian and the average American rich. Forget about the super rich. They can take care of themselves. They can hire all the best gurus in Goldman Sachs and boost their 5 million to 10 million. We're not talking about millionaires and multimillionaires. I'm talking about the average Joe. The average Joe, the ordinary person who has 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 or even half a million. Even a person who has half a million is kind of poor now in North America. And again, we're not talking about real estate. If you, if you include real estate, I think practically every North American is a millionaire. So if you compile a millionaire's list with real estate included, 90% of the population in North America are all millionaires. But if you take out real estate in the balance sheet, you will see that 90% drops to 10%. So this whole real estate is a bubble and it's just an inflated phantom Ponzi scheme. Right? So let's keep the real estate aside. What about the, remi the, the bulk of the population who are not growing their net worth or their wealth? What is the reason? So these facts prove to you that the financial planning model is broken in North America. And I'm going to, and, and let me give you some statistics. The historical rate of return from 1926 to 2004 for U.S. small cap IWM is 12%. For U.S. large cap SPY is 10%. And if you have the bond market is about 5 to 6%, money market is 3%. Most of the Americans and Canadians, if you ask them, what is the portfolio return? Let's talk about portfolio return. That if the majority of them are not even having 5% portfolio return, have you ever asked a question to your financial planner or your investment advisor, what is my portfolio return? Have you ever asked him to show the portfolio return from 2007 till now? A lot of them will tell you, okay? Conveniently not disclosing or hiding the years in which there was a market crash, that is the 2007 to 9, and they will show you attractive portfolio return afterwards. We're not talking about that. Even in this period, 2010, 15, the best performing portfolio returns, what they are offering with the model that they are following is about 10%. 5% is normal and in the standard deviation bell curve, the extreme is 10%. So if you see most of these rich people in the United States and Canada, their portfolio returns, how much are they averaging? 10 to 12%. Even if you have 3, 4, 5 million dollars. So you can, and these are not made up numbers, these are real facts. Most people's average, I mean the, the high income, portfolio returns are like if you get 10% portfolio return that's considered as above average 5% would be average but most Canadians and Americans are not making 5% they are making below in fact many of them are having negative portfolio return so there is it's clear that the model is broken and and if they are sincere they are intelligent they are educated they are hardworking let's go on that premise and which I think is a fact also so something is wrong. What's wrong? I'm going to offer my two cents. Okay, now I'm sure you have your own uh, explanation or your own reasoning or logic. What you have, you, I'm sure you have your own views, right? So I would like you to ponder. This video is more about an awakening rather than giving you quick fix solutions. So let, let's, let me give you my two cents. My two cents is the education system through which the financial planners and the MBAs and the accountants are coming out of, you know, the Financial Planning Institute, the CFA program, they undergo four or five years of rigorous academic education and all that. Those syllabuses and courses, I myself am a chartered accountant and I'm also a CPA from United States. So I do have some credentials to talk about this and I worked as CFO and auditor of companies around the globe. I've been CFO of public companies in various parts of the world, including Canada. Most of these courses and syllabus, in my view, 
they have, were all designed when the world was not globalized. So now that the world is globalized, the financial markets and the financial asset classes behave differently. The same asset fund or a bond fund or a, a ag fund or a, a high yielding uh, bond fund or an oil fund or a gold fund, they all are behaving differently. They, were, they used to behave in one way when the world was not globalized, but now that the world is globalized, there are, you know, like for example, in back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, share buybacks were not used as a manipulating tool to boost or artificially inflate stock prices. This has become the norm or the fashion these days, how companies manipulate stock prices by artificially boosting uh, and doing share buybacks. It's almost become a game now, a game play. So this was not there before, okay? That apart, there, were, there are so many ideas that are being taught in these financial planning courses, which in my view have become anachronistic and outdated or obsolete because the world has changed and they have not changed the courses. They're still clicking. Ask them, when were these syllabuses and courses designed? 1950, 1960, you know? They're still following the beaten down uh, stereotyped models, which are not working. What, let me give one example. All these financial planners, when you go to them, they'll ask you if you are a conservative investor, you're an aggressive investor, if you are in between, are you looking for income, are you looking for growth? And then, you know, uh, all of them sell you the concept of the key concept that they work on is a concept called diversification. Now, the way they present the diversification idea that if you diversify your assets, if you don't put all eggs in one basket, your risk is reduced. Sounds very appealing, right? Sounds very uh, intuitive, right? And then they'll tell you, Therefore, you should invest in Canada, you should invest in the United States, you should invest in emerging markets, you should invest in the BRICS countries, in Brazil, Russia, India, China, blah, blah. Then you're diversified, your risk is going down and all that. Baloney, this all crap. If you are investing in the same asset class and they are all correlated with each other, just because they are spread across, I mean, you are investing in pharma, you are investing in Tesla, you are investing in, tech, you know, Apple, you are investing in a biotech, you know, you're, you're, that's not diversification, that's not reducing your risk at all. You know, you are investing in Japan, you are inv investing in India, Excel fund, you are investing in the Chang China, Shanghai stock market, There's, that's not diversification. But an illusion or a fantasy or a mirage is created that you can reduce your risk by doing this kind of ballooning. That's not true. The only way, let me tell you the secret, the only way you reduce risk in a portfolio is by having assets in your mix which, should, which are not correlated with each other. So which means in any portfolio only 20% of the asset should be exposed to the stock market and 80% of the assets should have no exposure to the stock market. Now you will ask a question, you mean to say that you are the only genius who discovered this and all these great financial gurus know, don't know about it? Of course they know, but they don't preach, they keep these facts as a secret because think about it, if these guys start telling you the truth and and you and then what happens to the stock market what happens to the capital market what happens to the army of financial planners what happens to the army of brokers what happens to the army of you know go on and on and on how are they going to survive so that's the reason very conveniently i feel either due to no, lack of knowledge or because they are harping on the concept of diversification they don't educate or teach people what is true investment or what is true wealth management. So take for example, if you construct a portfolio with oil, gold, 
TLT, which is U.S. government paper, which was the best performer in the last four years, by the way. HYG, high yielding junk bonds. Uh, you know, they are junk bond, but they call it as high yield, a euphemism, by the way. HYG, UFA, this is your emerging market exposure, Europe, you know, Japan and France and all that. And then SPY, which is a global uh, stock market, you know, covers North America, you know, US and everything. So you will see none of these ETF, they're all exchange traded fund, none of these are correlated with each other, they're uncorrelated. Oil is no correlation with gold. TLT is not correlated to gold. HYG is not correlated to TLT. Uh, EF, see, the only thing which has some element of correlation is SPY, EFA, and HYG. These three do have some correlations, but the others are not. So by constructing a mix of, un, and there is a little bit of diversification too we have done, you know, by putting money in, SPY, EFA and HYD, you have done some diversification, okay, that will make the financial planners happy, you know, but that's not the point, we have also thrown in other non-correlated assets, so by mixing these, you can reduce your risk and boost your portfolio return, that's point number one, and this probably most of these planners also know about it, but what they do not know, either they do not know and they will not tell you, is that when the an asset class drops in value, okay, all the way from here to here, they do not teach you or they do not educate you or they do not disclose the secret that you can make money when the oil market goes down and you can also make money when the oil market goes up. They will only teach you or educate you when a thing goes up, they will tell you bye, 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 bye. And that's why they keep brainwashing you almost to a Pavlovian way of reaction of buy and hold. The buy and hold is a most overtaught, over abused, misused concept. The most overtaught philosophy is buy and hold. Why? Because it's easy to sell. It's very easy to sell the concept of buy and hold. The salaried class, the so-called dumb money, can e will easily buy into it. That's where they market it. But they won't tell you. Like I gave you this example. How come they never told you about this? That in the last two years, go and ask your financial planner or advisor. Slap this chart on his table after you see this video. Go and ask him. How come you never sent me an email? How come you never made me a phone call in the last one year that I could have made so much of money in by investing, by going long in SZO? Were you not aware of it? If they were so uneducated and illiterate that they didn't know about it, fire that person. You are fired. Like Donald Trump says, say, tell them you are fired. Okay? How come they don't do that? Question. You got to ask the right question. Same thing. Look at gold. Okay? Look at gold. Gold had a massive collapse. Right? All the way back in, two th okay, let's forget even 2013, let's take 2014, even March, all the way gold collapsed from this price to this price, or even let's take the short term, let's take the short term, even very short term period, let's take here, beginning of this year, February 2014, gold fell from 1285, 1285, all the way to 1147, such a massive drop, why were you not participating in this move up? By the way, they, were, they all come on television and even now they are telling, did you notice something? All of them say that you should go long gold and you will see people like Kevin O'Leary and many other experts come on television and they say that as a diversification concept, you should have 5% of your portfolio uh, in gold as an insurance and they only talk about going long gold but they'll also tell you by the way they will say that we don't know we can't predict the market we can't time the market but you are doing that when you say that you should have five percent of your uh, assets in gold you are going long gold so you are taking a stand that gold will go long gold will go up so you are effectively timing the market you are having a bias
So why do you always preach that someone should go only long and they should never go short? Why? Don't you think the model, the financial planning model is broken, is completely broken? There must be a reason that they only tell you this part. They never ask you to make money this way. Why? In fact, I can give you several examples in the television, in the print media, in all this time, they were telling buy gold, buy gold, gold is cheaper, gold is cheaper, gold is cheaper. Somebody who bought gold here, is, is no, they're losing the, like anything. Friends, there is something wrong in this whole approach in North America, the way they are managing wealth. Something is wrong. Think about it. There is something fundamentally broken. And that's what I'm trying to raise your awakening. Same with, uh, you know, the TLT. None of these experts ever talk about TLT. Kevin O'Leary says he's the best uh, guru in investment. There are so many other people who, who are supposed to be the God's greatest gift to mankind. But they, I've never seen them talk about TLT. Why? Why? You know, so friends, what I'm saying is the, the model that we, we, and by the way, let me also tell you, and there are certain things they want to, now let's say there is a, let's take the example of uh, oil, okay, since we talked about oil. Oil is dropping all the way to here. How to profit from it? They are not educating you. One way is doing options and all, which is very complicated for the average uh, salaried person. So I have put together a spreadsheet, and it's very simple, okay. The way, when, if you want to go long oil, okay, you can either trade the futures market, but you may not know how to futures and all, maybe, you know, rocket science or a black box, you know, some wooly wooly mumbo jumbo for many of you. Very simple. If you want to participate when crude oil is going up, you invest in this exchange traded fund called OLEM. It's an ETF. Okay, so there is absolutely no problem whether you have an RRSP or a, a 401k or a Roth IRA, you can do that. Similarly, when go, when oil was going down this period, the way you benefit is you simply go along this one, SZO, it, it's an ETF by PowerShares. So for every single asset class, when they go down, like gold and you know other examples like you take for example uh, EFA, EFA is in a downtrend or you take for example SPY, SMP is down. How do you benefit from this? See they are all, uh, they don't uh, bat an eyelid, they are so eager to tell you to buy the stock market, CNBC and all these channels. But when this is coming down, when the SMP has fallen from 2100 to 2040, how to benefit. No one talks about it on television. But let me tell you the secret. The way you do it, here are the secrets. The way you short S&P 500 is by going long. You go long SH. That's the name of the ETF. Automatically, so had you had my software, if you were my client and you had the software and you saw the sell signal, all you had to do was to go long SH. And here I'm not talking about leverage, though this says double, uh, triple and all. All these ETFs, there is no leverage. By the way, don't invest money in this double leverage and triple leverage and all. They have tracking error and they also have decay problem. When markets go sideways, you will lose money in them. Only when they trend, you make money. So forget the headlines, okay? So this is how you short S&P 500. This is how you short, uh, you know, the EFA. This is how you short gold. How do you how do you short gold when gold is going? UGL. You go long on UGL, okay? And even how do you go? How do you short TLT? Like your TLT is going down. How do you make benefit? You go long on TBT, okay? How do you short the HYG? You go long on SJB. How do you short EFA? You go long on EFZ. This is all the secret. I put together all this for the benefit of you. How come on the television they don't talk about that? How come your investment advisor, financial planner never talks about it? How come the, those great geniuses from Edward Jones and BMO Nesbitt Burns and TD Bank and Royal Bank and you know there's a plethora of 
financial planners going around why, why do they never talk about have they have they called you to their office sit down with the spreadsheet and have they explained to you shouldn't they be telling you listen crude oil is is just falling like nobody's business you know the whole world is talking about oil collapse right the whole world is talking right all this time you know as you saw massive massive fall in oil sorry here massive massive fall in oil how can they should be sitting with you and showing you this chart this is how you profit and therefore you should be going long on SRO. Why didn't they do it? Ask them, fire them if they can answer the question. Okay? Don't accept an answer from them, oh, who can predict the market, who can do this, but you are predicting. You are asking me when you are telling me go long go, go long go, you are taking a view on the long side. Why shouldn't you take a view on the short side? Right? So friends, what I'm saying is the model there is broken please become a client we'll give you free trial we have put together this spreadsheet you don't need any knowledge of options you can short any market in the world I have compiled this ETFs for you exchange traded funds come with low MER so you're not paying any fat management expense ratio okay Canada has the MER in Canada is criminally high okay United States is way better so all you do is you put together you construct a portfolio with these asset classes oil gold TLT HYG EFA SPY we are also coming out with a scanner a software so you don't have to keep opening this every day and oh when is the seller oh when is the buy you don't have to do any of that our software will do all the analysis it will tell you when to go long on SPY when to go short on SPY okay when to like it would have told you here go short on SPY when you get that message from the software you go and then you go long on SH everything is automated for you so the scanner will generate a buy list it will generate a sell list and it will generate an exit list and you can run this scanner daily, weekly, monthly because if you have a job you may not, you may be busy during the week on a Saturday or Sunday you can run our scanner I'll give you the answer you are not in our uh, wealth management you are not wasting your time with Blackberry, Apple, Alibaba, Yahoo, Visa earnings is coming out oh I had a home run you don't have to brag and but throw your collar up in a cocktail party that you did this genius trade in Blackberry and all that none of that crap all the, the only thing you need in your life is just these assets they're all globally diversified uh, uh, ETF software will tell you when to go long when to go short and the return you see the portfolio return which they are offering you is 5% to 10% with our method with our software if you go back and watch our video you can make 15 to 20 percent very easily annual portfolio return very easily you can make 20 percent some actually more than that but people if I say you can make more people will oh this must be a Ponzi scheme you know so I don't want to oversell this idea now you may ask how is it that they are making only 10 percent that your philosophy you are able to make 20 percent what is the secret the secret is the difference in approach as I told you they are only going long they don't short in the name of diversification they put 90 percent of their capital in equity market we are going for uncorrelated assets number one we are having TLT which they never have they never have TLT in their portfolio I'm challenging you I'm challenging you go and find out which investment advisor in United States or financial planner in Canada and asked you to put money in TLT they should have asked you to put the same allocation as they did for the stock market right did they they did not how come is a question you need to ask so this is one reason second reason is we are going to we short the market true we are not biased to the long side we don't care if the market goes up or down we are like hedge funds market neutral you know that's what the hedge funds tell you we are market neutral so why only you have the brains to be market neutral we can do too we can outperform you we can outsmart you the Johnny bloke so we know how to outperform you right they have the hedge fund manager is no great shakes they are projecting themselves that's all don't believe them 
So you can also do what they can do. You can do better than what they can do. So that's what I'm telling you. Because you do all these things, you know, what they are doing, that is they short the market, but they don't disclose to you, okay? So you do what they are doing, and you can achieve the 20-25%, which is the high net worth people, the millionaires and the billionaires are achieving. So this is a secret. For this reason, you can, like, take this example of S&P 500. How many of them told you, called you, hey, David, S&P is going down. You should now go short the market. In this period, look at the drop. That's about 50 to 60 points in S&P. With one contract, you're talking $3,000. With four contract, you're talking $12,000, right? So $12,000, $15,000 in a matter of, how long did it take to make this money? Fourth March to, and it just what, 10, 12 days? And are you are you gambling in, in a casino in Las Vegas? No, I'm shorting the US broad stock market as per my software. You know, and if you make four, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars in one month, can you imagine or visualize how your portfolio return is getting boosted? It's getting boosted. So, if this, so what I'm saying is, with our software, with our portfolio management software, you can very comfortably, very comfortably make a minimum, a minimum of twenty percent portfolio return every year year after year, whether in 2007, 2008, 2009, doesn't matter which year. Why? Because we're going to short the market too. If the market goes down, we know how to short it. If the market goes up, we know how to go long. Everything, you know, and we are fully armed with all these secret ETFs, which they never tell you how, how to play this, right? So, and also I'll teach you later on, and in a public video, I cannot share all the secrets when to short the stock market, when to be out of the stock market, when to go to a money market fund, all these secrets I'll teach you when you become a client. So friends, even if you don't agree with me and let's say you are married to your financial planner or you're married to your investment advisor, uh, you know, you only listen to Goldman Sachs or you will only listen to Citibank, you've been brainwashed, you're Pavlovian in your reaction, Fine, be happy the way you are, stay in the cocoon that you are very in your comfort zone. At least by the end of this video, if I have awakened you, if I have awakened you, and you don't have to agree with my thoughts, my two cents, my analysis, you, you don't have to agree. But at least if I have kindled you, your thinking, your thinking brain, if I have made you thought provoking, if you have made you intellectually question, you know, there is freedom in United States and Canada, but there is no freedom of thinking. You know, man is born free, but everywhere is in chains. That is true even today in this world. There is lack of independent thinking. We are being brainwashed by the media. The media tells us what to do. Buy, 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 buy. Never sell, sell, sell. Why? Something is broken, friends. How come? Question, 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 question. I could have made so much of money by investing in SZO. Why didn't I do that? Because they didn't tell you. They kept this fact hidden from you. Why don't you understand this? And if you still are not convinced, what else can I say? Only God can save you. And one other thing before I conclude this video. Wealth management or portfolio management does not mean that you have to be a millionaire. What is wealth? A $10,000 is also wealth. $1 million is also wealth. So if someone has only $10,000 and I'm not counting real estate, he or she thinks I'm poor, what am I going to do with $10,000? That's a wrong attitude. Even with $10,000, if you can make the $10,000, 20000 Twenty thousand, twenty-five thousand, twenty-five thousand, forty thousand, forty thousand, fifty thousand, like that. You are on the winning path. The principle is more important, not the dollar amount. If ten thousand becomes twenty thousand, aren't you going to be happy? Let's say you are broke, you are poor, you made a lot of mistakes in your life, and you only have ten thousand dollars. And by using our software, by using our methods, you are able to convert the 10,000 to 20,000 in one year, 100% return. Is that not going to make you happy? Is, does it mean that only the person who has a million dollar has a right to be happy? Is, is that person only the wealthy person?
It's not true. Ten thousand dollar is also wealth. Five hundred dollar is also wealth. Five million dollar is also wealth. So don't take this attitude that oh, this portfolio management and net worth is not for me. Those are all for rich people. It's not like that. Wrong attitude. Okay. Don't have such attitudes. And also, let me tell you one thing: if you are young. You're 25, 30, and for that matter, even if you're 50, 60, you're going to, in North America, life expectancy is long. You're not going to die at 65. You're going to live till 75, 80. And during retirement, you're not going to get any income, right? So at least by using a portfolio management software, by doing all this, you know, you will be able to generate uh, attractive return even during your retirement. And you can boost it and especially if you're young, if you're 25, 30 year old and if you follow this method where if your portfolio is going by 20, 25% as opposed to the Wall Street model and Bay Street model where you are averaging 5%. So take out your calculator or your Excel sheet and do the math. Take a starting balance $1,000, compound it by 5% or 10% for 40 years. Okay, and then compound it by 25% or 20% for 50 years or 40 years. See the difference in returns. You will be speechless. And don't forget the time and power of compounding. Don't sneeze at it. Don't think that, okay, one year is 5%, another portfolio is giving 10% or 15%, but I only, you know, that's not a big deal. It is a big deal because what you're missing, you're looking at it as one year. That's a mistake. Think of compounding. Okay, so if you're young, if you're 25, 30 and you're 50, 60 years, 30, 40 years to go, 30 years if your portfolio is growing by 20, 25% or even by 15% as opposed to what Wall Street and Bay Street and the wealth management industry, the official wealth management industry is offering you. What are they offering you? 5% may for the multi-millionaires, 10%. But you are making 15% with the software, you're going to beat them. So if you're doing 15% in 35 years, so think long term, think big picture. Okay. And if you don't believe what I'm saying, go to any bank in United States, go to any bank in Canada. They all have financial planners in all the branches. Okay. Ask them, show me from and ask and make sure and you force them to show the portfolio return during the year we had the cra recession and the financial crisis you know the 2007 8 period when markets crash ask them to show the portfolio return each year don't don't allow them to average they'll trap you they are very cunning people they'll tra they'll trap you by averaging numbers and showing you numbers which look attractive force them pin them down you know Catch them by the collar, pin them down on the table and ask them to show you year by year return from 2007 till 2015 and see the portfolio return. Tell them, listen, don't show me the return of a mutual fund. They will pick the mutual funds which had the best performance and then they will show you and try to fool you. Tell them, listen, I'm not interested in that. Show me the portfolio return you guys can offer what you did. Even that, the, the very financial planner advisor who is selling you his ideas, ask them to show how much they did in their own personal portfolio, how, what kind of return they achieved, you know, and ask them to show from 2000 and see whether they are doing even 5%. You'll be shocked. They're not even doing 5%. Most of them are below 5%. So I'm telling you, these guys, either they don't know how to make uh, build wealth or they know, but they don't want to tell you. One of the two things is that, you know, I leave it to your imagination which one is the correct answer. Okay, but whatever is the case, we are not concerned. See, are you interested in making Goldman Sachs wealthy? Are you interested in making Edward Jones wealthy? Are you interested in making JP Morgan wealthy? No, you are interested in your own wealth, right? So even if you have $50,000 net worth, you have to see how you can grow the 50,000 to 100,000, 100,000 to 150, 150, 200. That's how you need to think. Proactive planning and investment. And you don't need to waste your time. By the way, many of you are wasting your time. There are thousands of websites telling you when to buy a stock, you know, wasting time investing, trading in stocks. 
yeah, here and there you have a home run and all that. I'm not saying that you can't uh, make money by doing buying some biotech stock, going long and shorting and this and that. But so much a waste of time. The portfolio return that you will generate by doing all these perfect market timing cannot match what I'm showing you. In this, and, and you know, the other thing, those who dabble in stocks and do all these great home runs, they do not cost the time they are spending. They, for example, they will tell you I made 10%, 15%, but how much, what about your time? Did you put a salary on your time? They don't understand this concept. Time is money. They don't cost it. You see, whereas in this model, you're only investing in oil, gold, TLT, HYG, EFA, SPY. You're not investing in any stock. For the rest of your life, don't touch any stock. You don't need to invest in stock. I'm already covering stock with SPY. I'm already covering the international stock market with EFA. I'm already covering the risky ones with HYG. It is risky, but we are going short too. If HYG goes down, I'm making money on the short side. If HYG goes up, I'm making money on the long side. Now HYG is selling, again I'm making money. On the, this is true wealth building. What is missing in Wall Street and Bay Street is they only show you the blue. They don't talk about the red. That's the secret. They will only tell you when the blue part, go long, go long. Go long, go long, go long. What about all the reds? They won't talk about it. You see? This red part, they don't talk about it. Why? Burning question. Burning question. Keep thinking. What is the reason? So, like EFA is on a cell. You should be shorting it. Did they, did they tell you? EFA was sell here. Did they tell you? Here to here, EFA was long. Did they tell you? Ask, you, ask yourself and ask your financial planner. Okay, so instead of wasting money and your time dabbling in stocks and paying all the various websites uh, for all these uh, stock advice and all that, there's no need. And, and this you can manage at the weekend, you have ample time. And you're, if you can make 15, 20% annual portfolio return with these, just these six ETF, why, you know, and hardly any time, you'll be spending half an hour, software will generate, we'll have a scanner that will give you all the signals. And then whenever you have to short it, like EFA, you have to short it, I'm giving you this Excel sheet, you just go, go long, like you want to short gold, go long on UGL, okay? You want to go uh, short on SPY, go long on SH. And I showed you about crude oil too, and treasury and everything. So... I think I've conveyed, I hope I've at least made you sit up and think on this subject, even you don't have to agree with me, but at least if I made you to think, I would have served a major goal of me. My purpose of this video is to basically kindle your thoughts, making make you a thought-provoking person, challenge you intellectually and question your financial planner, question your investment advisor, ask him, how come you never called me? Ask him about SZO and send me an email what answer they give you. I, I can almost predict what they will tell you, but still, I'm curious to see what kind of answers they're going to give you. First of all, when you ask him, most of the financial planners and uh, advisors, I can take a bet they have never heard of SZO. First of all, don't show the chart. Just ask them, do you, uh, do you know what SZO? They don't know. They will have to look up on the internet what is SZO. That is the level of their knowledge, by the way. They're calling themselves investment advisors and financial planners. How come they don't know what SZO is? Ask them. Cross-examine them. Don't disclose all these facts. Then pin them down on the table. Okay? So do this. And you will be, and from next time, he will know that he cannot give you average returns. You are, you are the guy who looks for above average return. Your advisor will know that. Okay. So anyway, God bless you all. Bye for now. This concludes this video.